Welcome, Fight fans, once again to New York City and the Mecca, Madison Square Garden, where the heavyweights climb into the smart cage. There's one half of our main event. Pena Ferreira, he'll take on Maurice Green, the crochet boss, looking for a little redemption. Last year's 155-pound women's champion, Larissa Pacheco, wants another belt. Caitlin Neal's already in the building. We got fights coming very shortly. There's Myra Mazar. She'll square off against Caitlin Neal as we open the action here on ESPN+. And Danilo Marquez. He'll be facing Satoshi Ishii in a heavyweight showcase. Welcome to PFL pre-fight show. The theater at Madison Square Garden in the Big Apple itself, New York City. Heavyweights and women's featherweights take center stage in these semifinals. Coming up later tonight on ESPN, and of course we'll simulcast it right here on ESPN Plus and ESPN Deportes is our main card. A showcase and then four semifinals, and you can see Larissa Pacheco and Dennis Goldsov are both big time favorites in their semifinal matchups. Here's our early card. Caitlin Neal, the favorite against Myra Mazar and Satoshi Ishii, the 2008 Olympic Judo gold medalist, is a slight favorite over Danilo Marquez in that heavyweight showcase. Sean O'Connell, Randy Couture, Kenny Florian here inside one of my favorite places to watch a fight. <laughs> I won a championship here, so I love this oh, God, theater. I go. love this arena. I just want to remind everybody <laughs> that that actually happened. But really, it's all well, about tonight. Well, you know, it, it kind of it makes me think, like, <laughs> who is the greatest champion to ever win a big event here? You know, is it, you know, it could be Larissa Pacheco, everything. She's looking for two championships. It could be someone else. I don't know. I, actually, we have a graphic of something, that, and, and I'm sorry to those at home who are seeing this. Very, very scary graphic. <laughs> oh, my God. The house that Sean built. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, wow. that is a scary individual. Look at that one on the left. Randy is shaking in his shoes <laughs> right now. That is an intimidating guy right there. I wish we could just do the Sean O'Connor. Well, the folks have <laughs> been look asking at the pout, for that. Though. Randy, look at the pout. I mean, that's oh, yeah. the kissing of that's the glove. Classic. Oh, wow. wow. You ought to be in movies. Should have been a model. The house that Sean built. Yeah. And look, look what I this. built. I mean, look how <laughs> glorious it is. You're welcome, everybody. Uh, wow. uh, <laughs> has any has any bigger name in combat sports ever competed at Madison no. Square Garden? No, they have. I don't think they have. I can't think of one. In all seriousness, let's talk about the toughest test in all of sports that leads to this moment. The semifinals, the playoffs, Randy. Yeah, the toughest test in all of athletics. Signing up to be a champion in the PFL means you're fighting four times in eight months. This is the third of those fights. Last playoffs, there any indication anything can happen in this sport when you put that kind of pressure and that much at stake. Here's Jesus Pinedo proving he's not a flash in the pan. It wasn't a fluke. Here's Braga bringing it to Chris Wade, who's fifth attempt at trying to get into these finals. Martin Hamlet going down to Impa Kasanganai putting himself in position for his first championship run. Josh Silvera getting it done against Ty Flores to secure his spot in the finals for the first time as well. Anything can happen in the toughest test in athletics. That was just a couple weeks ago, and there was a theme that night, Kenny. It was yeah. experienced playoff fighters versus newcomers. Three out of the four, it was the newcomer who came through. So maybe something to watch for in the semifinals tonight. The competition is getting tougher because all of these folks are coming off wins, are coming off right. successful runs in the regular season. Well, we're going to have a newcomer to the heavyweight championship, which is very exciting. We will have a new champion in the men's heavyweight division. Our first million dollar winner will it be Dennis Goldsoff. He's taking on Jordan Heiderman, Penn and Fajeda taking on Maurice Green in our main event. And uh, just so excited for these fights. And again, history could be made in the women's featherweight division. Larissa Pacheco looking for her second world championship. She won it last year in the lightweight division. She's taking on Olena Kolesic now. She's trying to get it done in featherweight. Marina Maknakina taking on Amber Libra. All right, let's talk about the main event. This is a heavyweight affair. Randy, we'll start with Haina Fajera. They call him Problema because Let's be honest, he is a big-time problem to solve, both literally and figuratively. This guy is 
massive as a heavyweight. And I think the thing that's going to make the difference this year for Hanan Pereira is the coaching change. He's moved to top team here in Florida. New coaches, new training partners, sharpening his grappling, sharpening his wrestling. You can see the long-range weapons at the fastest knockout in heavyweight history right there at 25 seconds. This guy is athletic as they come. Long-range weapons on display against Mateo Scheffel, getting it done to secure his playoff spot. When this guy is on, he is tough to beat. And it's going to be interesting to see if he's on tonight. He's always much bigger than his opponent, except for tonight. Maurice Green is six feet, seven inches tall. Fajera is six foot eight. And we've seen Maurice Green with mixed success in the regular season this year. But he told us he's learned his lesson. Yeah, absolutely. He seems very, very focused. He said he made a lot of mistakes in that last fight against Ante Delia. And that Ante Delia, uh, of course, the, the guy who won the, the championship last year in the heavyweight division, he was very close to winning that fight. He said he took his foot off the gas. But here he is at his best against Marcelo Nunes, getting the finish by TKO. Landed some great shots against Ante Delia and did a great job in round one as well. There he is hitting a takedown. You know, so he has a lot of different ways to approach this fight against Fajay. Well, if their their equal physical stature is not enough to sell you on this fight, and the fact that the stakes are so high as they try to punch their ticket to a million-dollar opportunity, if that doesn't really strike your fancy, maybe the fact that these two guys genuinely seem to dislike each other is what will make you want to watch this fight. Actually, for more on the tension brewing, let's send it to Dan Hardy. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. The animosity and the tension between these two guys all the way through fight week has been very evident. And I feel like it's Henan Fajeda kind of poking at Maurice Green, trying to get a rise out of him. But Green's been very calm. But you could, the, the tension is there. You can definitely see it. You know, both of these guys are very imposing individuals. Both of them very big, very long, used to having the height and reach advantage over one another. But then when we saw them on the stage at the official weigh-ins, you can see, first of all, the tension between the two of them. They can't wait to get in the, into the smart cage and get started. But also the fact that they're physiologically quite similar. I mean, Hen and Fahey, a slight height and reach advantage, but Maurice Green, very, very comparable. And Ray Seppo, right in the middle of the two of them, a very big heavyweight in his own right, but was, you know, towered over by both of those two. It's going to be a great main event. Back to you guys. Besides us three, I don't know if there's anyone associated with the PFL <laughs> that is as physically imposing as Maurice Franks and Hainan Fajera. In all seriousness, how are we betting this main event? Because it's such an intriguing matchup. So we bring in our betting experts. Of course, I'm talking about the very best in the business, Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parker. Fellas, take it away. Sean, good evening for the first time. When I think of New York City, and I think at heavyweights, historically, that's exactly where we want to be. Now, before I get to Ian Parker, I would love to like compare these two heavyweights because there's very little physically that separates Ferreira and Maurice Green. Both guys are north of 6'7". You look at the knockouts, the subs, they do it in different ways. The records are very comparable. But here's the key. Ferreira has been here before. Maurice Green has not been here before. Will it play a difference here tonight? But Ian Parker, let's bring you in now. We know that in the heavyweight division, it only takes one, and I mean one shot to end a fight. How are you handicapping this one? Well, Coach, to your point, if that is that one shot that does happen, it's going to come from Hen Ferreira. We've seen it in the past. We just saw it against in his last opponent. He got that left hook, and we've seen it before. His striking is there. The part where we get a little concerned with him is where he gets taken down, put on his back, and he kind of gets lost. And Maurice Green did that decently against Ante D'Elia. However, I think Ferreira's made the adjustments at American Top Team. So minus 380, a little high on that money line. We don't like to go above minus 200. We can go into our props, even by finish. Minus 250, minus 225, a little high. So, Coach, we're going to take a step a little bit further. We're going to go round one, TKO or KO. I think La Problema, Hennon Ferreira finds that button on Maurice Green, puts him out. Round one, TKO, KO, minus 150. Let's go. I think that's a really smart play because in his career, if he's going to get it done, he's going to get it done fast. Now, Sean, still to come here on the pre-fight show, we're going to have picks on all three of the remaining semifinal fights. Another fight on top of that. We're going to have Parker's parlay. Also, we're going to have a bold prediction presented by Puncher's Chance. All of that is still to come. But for now, let's we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Ian. Of course, you'll be hearing from our betting experts throughout the night on ESPN+. Plus and on ESPN for our main card as well. So I showed you the heavyweight main event. 
Let's take a look at our women's featherweight bracket. Larissa Pacheco has looked so dominant. She's the one seed. She'll take on Elena Kolesnik for the third time in the PFL's smart cage. Marina Moknakina and Livrog there in the two versus three matchup. Let's talk about that one versus four, though. That's our co-main event. Larissa Pacheco, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, Kenny, won the belt at 155 pounds. One of the biggest upsets in the whole world of mixed martial arts. Now she's back to chase another belt, this time in a different weight class. What's the key for Larissa Pacheco? Well, she gained a ton of confidence, a ton of momentum from that last year's win over Kayla Harrison, and she has continued to look extremely dominant. Struggled a little bit on the scale in her first fight here in 2023 at 145 pounds. She promised that she would be back and be better, and that's exactly what we saw. There she is winning that million dollar check last year against Kayla Harrison. And we saw her striking on full display against another excellent striker in Amber Libra. And uh, she looked amazing on the scale. She's saying all the right things. She understands, you know, it took her three times to beat Kayla Harrison. So fighting Elena Kolesnik for the third time, she's not taking her easily at all. Well, Elena Kolesnik has looked better and better, especially her two regular season fights. Inside the smart cage, she looked great, Randy. She has had some struggles with the weight cut, and that happened again at the weigh-ins yesterday, which means Elena Kolesnik starts down a point on the judges' scorecards, which effectively eliminates any margin for error. Yeah, talk about having your back up against the wall. She literally has to win every single round or get a finish against last year's champion, Larissa Pacheco, which is no small feat. She's a striker by nature. That's her background. She's not afraid to step into the pocket and bang it out with anybody. Here she's against Aspen Ladd in her first regular season bout. Agassi here, again, letting her hands go. Stepping right in the pocket, and this time she says she wants to be the smarter fighter. Use those angles, use those footworks, and avoid that power early on. She thinks she can get it done. Let's take a closer look at this co-main event matchup. Eu quero tanto esse cinturão como eu quis ano passado. Eu posso ser campeã de duas categorias agora. I'm born as a fighter, and I am a fighter. Elena Kolesnik, they call her cannon for a reason. Big power behind her punches. Larissa Pacheco unloading big-time power shots. That was savage, just savage. I fight for everything in my life. Kolesnik is getting way more aggressive now. Other girls may be playing this I'm not playing it, I'm leaving it. Unrelenting pressure from the fist of Larissa Pacheco. She's one of the best fighters in the world. All right, love that co-main event, women's featherweight semifinal. I showed you the main event and the co-main. We've got two other semifinals. What's something to look out for, Randy, in one of these other semifinal bouts? Well, I'm excited about this Amber Leibach matchup with Maknakina. That's going to be a very, very interesting matchup. Leibach has had the highest of highs this season. Getting that first round knockout against Jindroba, the shot heard around the world, and then ran smack into Larissa Pacheco and lost the TKO in her second regular season bout. So she's got some psychological hurdles to overcome. I think she's put that in the right place. She's using that loss as motivation to go out here and get it done in the playoffs and get a shot at that championship title. All right. Randy took the featherweight matchup. So what about this other heavyweight semifinal? What should we look for? Well, you know, the first time we saw Dennis Goldsoff, you know, everyone thought he would be a world champion here in the PFL. He has all the skills. He has all the talent. He has all the physical tools as well. But something has always happened. Some kind of bad luck, injuries, maybe some psychological issues or whatever, maybe caving to the pressure. But I think, you know, uh, what I really want to find out is that time now for Dennis Goldsoff. You know, he's gained a lot of experience. He said he's changed a lot about how he trains and prepares for his training sessions. And because of that, he said he's a lot healthier heading into this. But there's no question for me, all the skills that he shows, he, he has proven that he can be one of the best heavyweights in the world. All right, that's something to watch for in each of those. But how are we betting the other semifinals? Coach Ian, let us know. Yeah, Sean, I'm hearing a lot of trigger words tonight. I want it as bad as I want it last year. There's one million reasons, Ian Parker, that all of these fighters want to get it done tonight and then head to November. But as we look at the odds, first for Pacheco. I mean, minus 2,000, that's what it's been hovering around the under one and a half, over minus 300. How do we even bet this fight? I bet that you can tell me. <laughs> you know what? Uh, 
No disrespect to Elena Kolesnik. Not making weight really does not help at all, because to Randy's point, when your back is against the wall, now you, there is no back. The wall is just everywhere, and Pacheco's going to win this fight. I'm going to go first round TKO or KO. You're getting really good odds on that. Even, look, my finish is minus 550, minus 225, similar to the Hen Ferreira situation here. There's no doubt in my mind that this will be the third time that Pacheco gets it done. Coach, round one, TKO, KO for last year's champ, possibly double champ, minus 165. Sign me up. Yeah, don't be late to the party in our co-main event tonight. It may end very, very quickly. Who knows? Now, on the other side, the sports books believe it's going to be a much more competitive matchup for the women. Now, we were shocked when Amber Livrock shocked the world with that head kick. Do you think she gets it done like that again tonight? Uh, I don't. Uh, Marina Makina is a very well-rounded fighter. We saw when she fought Kayla Harrison last year, she went to a decision. And this season, she looked great against Evelyn Martinez. That was a really tough fight. She edged it out. I think she has more ways to win. She's sitting at minus 440 because, to Randy's point, Amber Lee Rock, after the knockout win, she got finished quickly, and a lot of her losses have been in round one. I think Marina gets it done by finish at minus 150. All right, now let's flip the script and go back to the heavyweights, the number one seed. We just heard the guys talking about Dennis Golsloff. He's always had something happen, but he comes in as the favorite in this one. How do you see this fight? Coach, at the beginning of the season, I said this was my pick to win the whole thing. I stand by that. He has looked absolutely fantastic. As long as he is healthy and he's able to get to the finals, no travel restrictions, nothing, he's the man. You know, with Jordan Heinerman, his opponent, I did not like what I saw in that first fight. He was getting out struck with volume and he landed that one kick that caused an injury i think he's in a lot of trouble tonight we're gonna go by tko or tko of minus 135 dennis goltz off off to the finals we go oh i want to see those hands fly tonight for goltz off now when i think of ian parker i think of a bold 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 talent here at the pfl brought to you by his puncher's chance what is your bold prediction ian parker for tonight it's bold, but I don't know if it's as bold as we've gone before. I'm going to go with Larissa Pacheco to get this done within the first minute of the fight. I think Olena's going to come out very aggressive, and I think we're going to see what we saw the first time around. Step back, right cross, finish. Give me Pacheco inside of 60 seconds at plus 400. And now we recommend, this is a bold prediction, maybe just a little bit of a sprinkle. Don't go crazy, because that 60-second clock will start very, very quickly still to come I know you all are asking for it I just looked at my Twitter the Parker's parlay still to come here on the pre-fight show but for now Sean O'Connell send it back to you all week long Larissa Pacheco has been saying it's not even going to take me a whole minute and of course <laughs> the bold prediction from Ian Parker is that she will get it done inside one minute and at plus money that's why he's the best in the business big night ahead and all of it of course building towards a main event matchup, heavyweight semifinal between two absolute giants. At six foot eight, Henan Ferreira gets attention everywhere he goes. Henan Ferreira, he is indeed a problem. Oh, it's a one, two, good night from Henan Ferreira. It doesn't matter who's in front of me. I got a family to feed, I got kids, and I got to do. Big shot by Maurice Green. Oh. Tô bem, tô bem recuperado, treinei pra caralho, tô pronto pra essa guerra. Oh, problema with the first round finish! I'm supposed to be here. Morris Green looking way more confident now. Eu vou nocautear ele no primeiro round. Man, a pound of man on the side of Joel oh, Jones' head! Wow! He's out! Only the strongest literally survive. And that is the end! <laughs> sometimes requires a different kind of soldier. The Army National Guard is searching for the best of the best to serve within the Special Forces community. You'll train to master the weapons, tactics, and strategies of unconventional warfare and take your place among the elite few to wear the Army's legendary Green Beret. Army National Guard Special Forces. Impossible is their day job.
we support all those willing to take the puncher's chance. It's about challenging myself every day, taking a chance. It's never standing still, never taking it for granted, and never following because you never know what lies ahead. Living life my way, enjoying the ride despite the obstacles. Achieving your goals takes grit and determination with a bit of luck and the help of a few good friends. But to create a memorable life takes something more. The puncher's chance. I'm the best there ever is, man. I'm the best there ever was. I'm 7-0 in New York City. The stars are aligned. It's my time. Dominant performance for Hurricane Shea. One of the most exciting fighters in the sport. Oh. DJ Hurt, Clay Collard, clinches a playoff spot. There ain't no Hurricanes in Utah, baby. Oh. Oh. Clay Collard drops Anthony Pettis a second time. I want somebody to go for the kill, and I know that's exactly what he's going to be trying to do, and that the best man's going to win. Taking down Nishikawa. I'm number one seed, he's number four seed. None of that sh matters to me. All I care about is being locked in the cage with that fool. This is one of the most exciting fights. I think the competition's lived up to it, and I'm excited to go out there and compete against Clay. New York City will play host to that monster main event matchup. Not even a week from tonight. Welterweights and lightweights, that semifinal will be Wednesday, next Wednesday, August 23rd. Tickets are still available. Go to pflmma.com slash tickets. We'll start things at 6.30 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. But, but tonight, right here, these PFL playoffs, and so this is our main card. Nathan Kelly, Damian Nelson, We'll start things with a featherweight showcase and then four semifinal matchups. And just a couple of bouts on the early card. First bout will be 7.30 Eastern, right here on ESPN Plus. Caitlin Neal, Myra Mazar, Danilo Marquez, Satoshi Ishii in a heavyweight showcase. All right, let's, let's talk showcase bouts, including the one that starts us off tonight. Kenny, what do, you, what do you have for me on that first fight? For me, I'm looking forward to Nathan, Nathan Kelly's fight. Uh, this is a guy who comes from Ireland, comes from uh, SBG team, same team as Conor McGregor. He's actually uh, went a few rounds with Conor McGregor as well. He's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He's gone off to Thailand, been working on his striking. But every time we've seen him, he's been exciting. His technique has looked better. He's looked more and more confident. And if he gets you on the mat, watch out. He will finish you, whether it's a rear naked choke or an arm triangle choke. His last performance in the PFL Challenger Series, that one right there where he hit that arm triangle, was clean, absolutely flawless. First round submission, watch out for him. Seven straight for Nathan Kelly. That'll be the first fight on our main card on ESPN. Uh, Randy, give me something to look for on the early card, something to watch for. Well, we got a Challenger Series alum in Caitlin Neal. She won a close, unanimous decision over Coriega in, in her Challenger Series bout, where she is. Early in that fight, doing a great job from the clinch. She's a well-rounded fighter. Here's a gal that had aspirations of being a cheerleader in college and disappointed when she didn't make that squad. That led her to MMA, that built that competitive void in her. And she's done a great job. Seven victories in her career. She's on a three-fight win streak right now. How are we betting the showcase bouts? Our experts will let us know. Jonathan Coachman, Ian Parker, showcase, please. Sean, that's what we do. We showcase our talents and then we meet at the pay window. So let's start with that second bout on the ESPN Plus card. Ian Parker, Marquez and Ishii, where are you going? I'm going with Danilo Marquez at plus 124. I'm taking the dog here. Look, Satoshi Ishii's going to have the wrestling credentials, but he has not fought really anyone. He's been really inactive. And Danilo Marquez, if he can keep the fight steady, he's going to have a huge advantage on the feet. I'm going with the underdog to get the upset. Oh, I like when we have plus odds. Now at 9 p.m. Eastern tonight, it'll be on ESPN and also ESPN Plus. This will be the very first fight, and it promises to be an absolute banger. Where are you going on this one? 
You know, I think Kenny really gave the best breakdown possible on Nathan Kelly. He is extremely talented. The striking's come a long way, but when he gets the fight to the floor, you are in trouble. Now, there are props here to get the fight by finish at minus 150, but I'm gonna go something a little bit different here, Coach. I'm going to our round props. I'm gonna go under two and a half rounds to get the fight done. So, however it happens, I do think it will be Nathan Kelly, probably by sub if you want to take it a step further. But for me, under two and a half is the way we're gonna go with this fight. And that is my absolute favorite bet in all of MMA, except for this one. Everywhere I go, people scream at me, give me more Parker's parlays. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I believe I need not one, not two, not three, but a four-way parlay tonight. Talk to me. We're going to start off with the first fight of the night. I'm going Caitlin Neal. I do think she has what it takes to get it done. Her opponent is aggressive with the striking. Neal, we've seen in the past in the Challenger Series. If she can get the fight to the floor in top position and can stay active and aggressive, she should get it done. Nathan Kelly, forget under two and a half, coach. I'm going to beat you in that one. We're going to go inside the distance. Just in case under two and a half doesn't work, I think he gets it done way earlier. His ground game is just level above his opponent. Then we're going to go to Dennis Goldsoff. Just needs to get the win easy as that and last but not least Hen Ferreira in the main event that's going to leave us at plus 274 on the four leg parlay let's go it's also going to keep you interested all night long from start to finish now we're going to be camped out at the pay window because that's just simply what we do and we'll be here all night long on ESPN plus and also on ESPN I'm fired up for the heavyweights and for the women Sean let's go a four-leg Parker's parlay. You can't ask for much better than that. You know, fellas, we've been waiting a little bit too long. I agree. We have fights coming in a matter of moments now. We've got semifinals. A new champion will be crowned this year in the heavyweight division. Larissa Pacheco is looking to become the first PFL fighter to win belts in two different divisions. Can she get past the trilogy bout with Elena Kolesnik and be one step closer to that? There's a lot of reasons for you to stick around with us all night on ESPN Plus and later on ESPN. There's Caitlin Neal backstage. She's smiling now. Will she be smiling when her bout ends? She'll take on a very tough Myra Mazar, who also fought on the PFL Challenger Series. She seems pretty happy, too. We're all smiling because we've got fights coming up on the other side. Sean O'Connell, Randy Couture, Kenny Florian, Dan Hardy and Paige Van Zandt will be here too. Join us for the fight. How do you achieve greatness? It's setting goals with relentless determination. It's going hard when you want to quit and when no one else is watching. It's what you put in your body to perform at your highest state. That's why you choose MRE Whole Food Protein Shake. MRE Protein Shake is packed with 25 grams of whole food protein to help you rebuild and recover. And with zero whey protein, it's gentle on your stomach so you can feel your best and show up again tomorrow.
Tonight, women's featherweights and heavyweights are fighting for survival in the PFL playoffs. A million ways I only need one. A million moments I only need one. We're lighting up the smart cage tonight. Right hand, boy. Dennis Gosov is hoping for another big night. Oh! 